Hello again. This is Dr. Jimmy. It's still Saturday the 12th of August and I'm still talking about run, blood, sweat and fears, at least for a moment. Uh, this is part 10 in my series on the history of the event Universal Orlando Halloween Horror Nights 25, that lovely 25th anniversary event that was held a couple years ago at Universal Studios Florida. Now, I got cut off. Actually, I'd hit a half hour mark anyway, so it was time to finish the previous video, but I had an important telephone call from an important person, and I could not. That's what the barking was. That was one of my ringtones uh, for one particular important person that must be answered because they're a very important person near and dear to my heart. If they call me, I must answer. And so I spoke to that person. And... Uh, I don't know if the person was joking or not, but if what I just heard is true, I might get to go to Universal Studios Singapore Halloween Horror Night 7 this year after all. I think it was a joke. I don't think it was serious. We'll wait and see. Uh, I'm not going to get my hopes up, and don't you get your hopes up, but if I do manage to, that would be amazing, utterly amazing. But enough of that. Let, that. let that let that rest in your minds for a bit. Probably I will not. Uh, I will likely remain here for all of September and October, and likely uh, this will be the only Horror Nights I do this year, as I have only done Orlando, although I've done all of them in Orlando, but only Orlando. I've not been to Hollywood, Japan, or Singapore's Horror Nights, or Barcelona, Spain, back, uh, you know, a long, long time ago. Uh, from 2000 to 2004, when they still had that going on in, in, in Port Aventura. <clears throat> but to get back where I left off, sounds like an electrical storm. I hear thunder. It's possible that I may have to shut off my computer just in case there's a net power outage. They've buried the power lines in this area. Power should not turn off during a storm, but sometimes it happens anyway. So, mm. hopefully. Now, I have been talking about cocktails for the house run blood, sweat, and fear. Plural. I, not really a cocktail, more like a, more like a shot. Not necessarily a shot, but more like, you know, some liquor in a cup with, with ice, basically. Uh, of different liquors from different countries that would be represented by the international reapers <clears throat> and the first country represented in the house was brazil you know bum 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 da 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 you know brazil yes like that weird movie that terry gilliam made but uh is it gilliam I never know. How does he pronounce his name? I don't know if it's a get or a J. I don't know. But uh, it used to be a Monty Python. That was a wonderful movie, Brazil. It's very weird. It has nothing to do with the country <laughs> of Brazil. It's just called that. But uh, let me read my description here. In run, blood, sweat, and tears, we... In oh, I said tears. <laughs> I meant fears. Oh, my God, I wrote tears. That's an error. I should edit that. We encountered teams of reapers, it might have even been autocorrect, I don't know, uh, reapers representing many various nations. An international blood and dying festival. Yes, uh, I made a joke a few times, you know, international food and wine festival at Epcot happens about the same time as Horror Nights. So this is the international um, blood and dying festival instead of food and wine festival. Yes. Uh, Sort of like that other event hosted about this time each year at a very different theme park a few miles west on I-4. I said it there. So I'm doing something different for this, inspired by another game of survival popular at that very park, Epcot. You may have heard of it, Drinking Around the World. Yes, that's a game of survival. For those of you who have lived in this area, 
And you know there's a little sort of game that cast members and others play at Epcot Center called Drinking Around the World. You start at either Mexico or perhaps in Canada, and then you go to each country, and as you go to each country, you take a drink. Uh, and by the time you get to the other side of World Showcase, you're schlocked. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's worse doing food and wine because you might want to try every little stand because there's more countries than just the pavilions. <laughs> but that would be suicide, I guess, unless you're really, you know, poor judgment crew or somebody who can tolerate that sort of thing. But you won't remember ever doing it afterwards. <laughs> Instead of creating a cocktail for the house, I offer a challenge, I say. A flight of drinks for each country represented. i got to break the rules for this. Finnegan's won't have what we need. We start in City Walk. After the initial guards, the first pair are from Brazil. The gas mask guys. So, cachaça. Brazilian liqueur at Antojitos in City Walk. Look to comments for further details. I don't think I had photos for the others, but for the original, and isn't it look pretty? Uh, it's just a trick of the light. It's a clear beverage, but that's Casasha, which is, I think, made with the uh, sugar cane, and it's very potent. It's the, uh, it's the, uh, it's the liquor that goes into a caparina very popular drink from Brazil. Uh, some Brazilian cachaça was used then for Brazil. Now, let's go to my comment section. 21 comments. So, I said, the next pair of assassins are from Japan. So now to cowfish for some sake. And there is a photo here. This is a uh, this is what I had for Japan. I went to Cowfish Sushi. I can't quite make out the words though. Maybe if I turn it sideways a little. It's just too bright. Let's see. Um, can you see that? Bring it closer and turn, turn it one way or the other. Anyway, it says Ozeki Nigori Sake, which is cloudy. It's a sake on lease. If you look at the picture in the cup, you see it's sort of milky looking. It's, it's a clear, oh, oh, look at the bottle, see? It looks, see that? That's it, that's the sake itself. It's clear, uh, not clear, it's cloudy, like, like milky looking. And that particular sake is usually served cold uh, rather than hot. And so you get a little cup and I enjoy it. I actually finished off the whole damn bottle. Uh, that's, that's what they serve you. But it's quite a bit of sake with the cowfish uh, there. So I have that as my next one. Now, I then said, the next one up are those twins from Egypt. Most Muslim countries frown upon alcohol, but the ancient Egyptians actually invented beer. There are many good beers from Egypt even today, but where at Universal are any of these available? I'll have to hold off on this one until I find out. Or maybe by the time I've got through all the other countries, I'll be completely mummified, and so that will count. Oh. So. I went to... Uh, I never did find the Egyptian beer uh, at, um, at that particular location. In fact, I know there are brands of Egyptian beer, but I could not find it on sale anywhere at Universal Studios. I don't know if they'd have it at Disney. I'm sure there may be some pub, some place, especially places that specialize in beer from around the world that's likely to have some of the wonderful Egyptian beers that could be drunk for run blood, sweat and fears if you want to recreate this international flight of fancy. But uh, I, had, I couldn't find anything Egyptian, so I never got that drink that night, unfortunately. Um, next was Canada. So it says, now Canada and finally at Finnegan's for Canadian Club. Not the kind used on baby seals. No, 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 not that kind of club. And here was the picture of the shot of Canadian Club whiskey for Canada. So I've already had three drinks by this point that night. 
Okay. So Michael asked me, is there no drink for a run? Because I hadn't made a specific run cocktail. I said, no, there'll be eight. <laughs> if I ever figure out where to get Egyptian beer. <laughs> now, I didn't get pictures of the rest. Um, no, I didn't get pictures of the rest, but I did go back to Finnegan's. I waited a bit. This was on October 4th. I waited a bit and went back to Finnegan's and had a shot of Sambuca. Wonderful stuff. The little coffee beans, they had that at Finnegan's, and that was for Italy and the Gladiators. Then for Blitzkrieg Brothers, I had a shot of Jägermeister, also available at Finnegan's. Then to represent the Candy Girls of America, I had good old American bourbon. Uh, I don't remember what kind. It might have been something as, you know, as, as basic as a Johnny Walker or something. I, whatever it was, it would have been a Kentucky bourbon American whiskey. So that was, I didn't get the photo, but this. Then, finally, for the Chainsaw Wilding Comrades, the Tovarish of the Radioactive Soviet Wasteland, of course, Stoli. You know, like a like absolutely fabulous Stoli and Boli or whatever they're always drinking. Uh, Stolitznaya vodka. Uh, I would have preferred to have the vodka ice cold. Like they, you stick it in the freezer and let it get ice cold. And then you have a dill pickle when you do a shot of vodka like they do in Russia. Um, I think the Russian vodka tradition. You take the dill pickle, and it's best to get a dill pickle like a Russian one, or probably a good substitute. If you go to Publix and you go to the international area, you'll find in Mediterranean and Jewish kosher foods, you can find tinned pickles from Israel. They're made according to Russian recipes, because a lot of Jews come from Russia and go to and make the pickles that way. They're actually Russian style, but they're in a tin. So that they have the correct flavors and spices. And you take one of those, and then you sniff it, smell the pickle juice on the pickle, and you take icy cold shot of vodka, you drink it immediately, and then uh, right after that you eat your pickle. Uh, Russians believe that eating pickles helps you uh, from getting too much uh, poisoning in the top, because they drink a lot. And so they drink a lot of shots of vodka, and the pickles will keep you from getting sick. Uh, I don't know if it works. Some people might just get sick eating the pickles. <laughs> but <clears throat> didn't have the pickles at Finnegan's. Um, just and, the, and I don't think the vodka had been stuffed, left in the freezer to get icy, 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 awesome cold. So it's actually a little thick when you pour it. That's the best way to drink vodka. But it was still a good shot of, of cold vodka. Um, and so I had all of that wonderful stuff. Uh, and like I said, fortunately, um, I was able by the end of the night because starting, I think, I think that was the year that there was no midnight closings. Let me make sure of that. Uh, that's something about Halloween Horror Nights 25. I don't know if I mentioned that before. But they used to always have three different times to close the park during Horror Nights, midnight, one, and two. And beginning in beginning 2015, they ended the midnight closings. So it was only it was always open till 1 a.m. at the earliest, or 2 a.m. And so um, October 4th, I'm not certain if that was a 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. closing, but I had plenty of time before the night was over to walk around eat some pizza from Louis, uh, you know, vomit. No, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I can hold my liquor, and I can lick my holder. <laughs> That's disgusting. No, I, uh, and, uh, and I managed to go to haunted houses, and by the time it was time to drive home at 2 o'clock in the morning, I was sober. So I was, uh, you know, you have to, you have to pace yourself. And I may have been really blitzed at one point during the night, but by the end of the night I was sober. I stopped drinking after that and only had uh, food and, and fizzy drinks and managed to get home safe. 
And so I do say, if you want to have these drinks at Horror Nights, pace yourself or get a designated driver, but don't get a room, whatever, but don't try to drive home while you're drunk because then you'll kill yourself or somebody else. If you're lucky, uh, you might just get arrested and locked up for a long time and lose your license. Um, I recommend, of course, never operating a motor vehicle at all if you're going to get schlocked. But that was one night that I got rather drunk at Horror Nights. But I don't plan to do that ever again, not that drunk. Hmm. It can be quite dangerous. But that's what I made for Run Blood, Sweat and Fears. And like I said, uh, the fact that it was hard to find all the proper drinks, all the thing I wanted, and especially I never found the Egyptian beer or anything from Egypt. I realized the limitations, even going to City Walk and to other pubs at City Walk, the limitations are profound and I realized that I should start thinking about making cocktails outside of the park. But I didn't start that until 2016. All right. So, what the hell was the next haunted house? Strike, run blood and sweat off, off of this. So we move on to the sixth house of Halloween Horror Nights 25. And the sixth house was in Sprung Tent 2. That's the sprung tent that you have to go in <coughs> the queue over by Men in Black. And so it goes around behind that. And if you recall, sometimes they have some amazing facades. Uh, the year before, they had recreated Michael Myers' house from Halloween for that house. So, well, this year the house was insidious based on um, the film. I think it was directed by James Wan who had made the first Saw movie, and I believe also it was uh, a Bloomhouse production. Um, Bloomhouse, uh, I think his name is Jason Bloomhouse. He started a production company and started most of the movies. I'd say 99% of all the Bloomhouse movies have been horror films and thrillers. There have been a few other weird things occasionally, but the majority of the films under the Bloomhouse label, I've been scary movies. In fact, the logo for Bloomhouse, when it starts out, it's like a creepy haunted house, and there's a creepy girl, and there's someone on the ceiling, chairs floating around. It looks like you're in a creepy haunted house, and then Bloomhouse shows up, and the H in house is in the shape of a house, and it's rather disturbing. And so they make some good scary movies. Uh, in recent years, many hit horror movies have come out of Bloomhouse including all of the paranormal activity movies, all the Purge movies. Um, and a lot of them are released by Universal. Not all of them, but a lot of them are also released by Universal. The Insidious movies, the Sinister movies, and uh, the, the two films, the Ouija and Ouija 2, um, and, uh, and a bunch of other movies. Uh, Get Out recently, and the other one was uh, Split with... Uh, with uh, Professor X, uh, James McAvoy, yes, that's his name, playing playing multiple personalities. Very, very good movies come out of Bloomhouse, some better than others, but they've become hits in current day horror. It's become like, you know, like Universal back in the 30s and 40s, or Hammer Films in the 50s and 60s, a studio that's become strongly identified with horror. Uh, not really a studio, a production company. A lot of them released by Universal, which is a studio that has a history with horror, so that's appropriate. So they released Insidious, and they'd also released two more Insidious movies, and by the time uh, 2015, there'd been three. Okay, the first one and the, and the two sequels, although the third movie was really more of a prequel than a sequel. In fact, um, <clears throat> there's a bit of prequelness in the second one as well. It goes back and forth in time. 
But when you're in the further, which is a dark place like just then, uh, you, you're not always in the same time and space. I don't want to go through all the movies. It's the too detailed. See them. There's a fourth one coming out next year. See that too. It's probably going to be important. Just rumors I've heard. Um, but uh, in these movies, um, the idea is that some people can travel into this other plane called the further, where dead people are, the spirits of the dead, but also other things might be out there. Demons. And there's, in the first movie, there's this demon called the Lipstick Demon. Oh, in some of the credits, the, the man with fire on his face. He's all black but his face is all red. Looks like Darth Maul, but apparently he's put the red on himself. And he's very creepy looking, and he wants a little boy who has this power of astral projection into the other planes. And he wants to get that boy for himself, and he has this creepy place where he, it's almost like, you know, it's got toys and puppets and things, and he makes stuff with his sewing machine. He's like, into fashion or sometimes a little bit creepy little guy and uh, and it, that's part of it and it's really effective this frightening creature remember you've probably seen you've probably seen the uh, the scene where the, where the father is talking and the woman next to him is psychic and she has a vision the demon's face comes out from the side of his head from behind and and it's like ooh that makes you jump lots of great scares in the insidious movies and the second one featured uh, the bride in black, this, this woman in black who uh, was a specter, like uh, was haunting it. And turns out she's the ghost of a serial killer who was a cross-dresser. Turns out it's not even a woman, it's a man dressed as a woman in black. Because mommy wanted a little girl and forced a little boy to dress up like a girl. And he got all completely twisted, became a murderer. And so he's important in this as well and the third is the man who can't breathe he's always got oxygen mask he's very important and the third one is a ghost <coughs> in in a haunted apartment building in new york as opposed to the houses that are in the first two films but yet in the further they all overlap and you find out how these three stories are connected in part three it's all quite elaborate rather fun i like the movies a lot and so the house was actually based on all three Insidious films. And you go in and it's the house from the first movie. And it's all lit up and it's quite scary. But it also incorporates part of the, one of the psychic women who's investigating because you have like the entranceway on the side with the sort of gate in the garden that's from a different location than the house that the facade is. But it doesn't matter, it works. You recognize something from the movie. But when you go in, it's very creepy. I think only the very opening is in the real world. There's all these little blue lanterns throughout the house. The blue lanterns are used to find your way through the further, so that actually shows you you're in the further. And even though it looks like the real world, that's why at the seance, the mannequins of the people doing the seance, and the one guy has the gas mask like in the movie, but the fact is you're really in the further, so you're seeing them from that other side. And the, the demon keeps popping out from behind places and uh, frightening you in the boy's bedroom and he pops out and then you go into that dark place where he took the boy um, with all of its big gates and ornate things and all the, the glitz and stuff that he's working on and you see him floating around behind that sort of chain link with his making tongue at you and stuff quite creepy and you come around on the side, and of course, through that scene, of course, the music from that scene, which is Tiny Tim, tiptoe through the two lips, which is really creepy in this area. So you go through that, and then he pops out from, and, and you know, the guy keeps popping out. That's the thing. It's like you don't know which side is going to come out at you on it. Makes it quite creepy. Um, then there's another scene. You're in the further itself, so you see, like, the, the room from the second movie, uh, and there's the the little, the stairs going up, and there's the little uh, baby uh, stroller, little baby um, play thing. Uh, it's like a, a like a, 
like a baby stroller, but one that the baby plays with, and it's got, you know, it's moving by itself. And uh, <coughs> the woman in black is there to stalk you. And then you go into one of those scenes in the further where you encounter those ghosts. Um, there are these women. One is ironing and grinning, and there's a, there's a father, and then uh, another woman, and, and she turns and shoots with a shotgun right at you, and you can feel the air blast. It's quite horrible. And the, the scene where this uh, a photographer is, is going in a photo studio, and the, the ghosts are suddenly there. Or was that dead end? <laughs> it sort of reminded me of that. Maybe that was, I might have gotten my houses crossed. It's, but, uh, and, and you have a corridor. Now, for me, this was one of the scariest uh, scenes in the haunted houses at Horror Nights the first time I went through it. They recreated the effect in Exorcist the next year. Uh, it's simply a really, really dark corridor. And as you go through that dark corridor, um, it's filled with smoke or, or sometimes, and you can't see a bloody thing. And there's soft walls in, in hands. And so you're going through this dark, dark, dark corridor, and something touches you on either side, and it freaks you out completely. The first time I went through that, I couldn't see a damn thing, and I'm completely freaked out. And, oh, my God, this is terrifying. And I, that's one of the scariest moments. But when I went back the next time, I knew what it was and what to expect because I didn't know the first time I went through it. See, when you go through and you don't know what's going to happen, that's part of the fear. And knowing that, um, it wasn't as scary also because you could see better. Uh, every other time I ever went through there, it's like there was enough light, maybe from the exit sign or something, and not enough, not enough fog in there. Um, that uh, it never had the same effect again, and I was disappointed. Also, this house was very much like Werewolf was, timed scares. You know, they, they, they were, there were audio cues that kept repeating, and the scares were very timed, so you could, it could be surreal if you were not in the right place for it. The room where, where the, uh, the woman in white comes out of the mirror at you, for example, uh, that's a timed scare every time, you know, when she gets out and tells you to get the hell out of that. Uh, that was in the bedroom of a little girl. That's actually the woman in black, uh, who's actually a boy, dressed as a girl. And you're in that bedroom, and the girl is sitting on the bed. It's a mannequin, and the mother comes out of a mirror at you. Um, and uh, there's a great room, though, one of the best rooms in the house, and it's filled with sheets. <clears throat> hooded people under sheets. This is a scene in the further, and you don't know which of them are people and which of them are mannequins and what might pop out at you, and it's just very unnerving and very creepy. The music is just unnerving, and I think the woman in white is in there, and then the, the, the bride in black, and then after that you've got the lipstick demon, all of them in rapid succession, one scare after another. Uh, especially when, when you leave the house, it's just a gauntlet. So I found it very good, a very effective. I probably didn't do my best describing it, but the scenes in the movie are recreated. There was also a corridor uh, somewhere in the haunted house which featured the man with the, who can't breathe. Uh, the man who can't breathe um, wasn't used as much, but you see his footprints going up onto the ceiling, and there are entranceways other hotel rooms or not apartment rooms an apartment room corridor and he might come out at one side or another and they do very good uh, scares there and at the end it was four characters one after another in a gauntlet you'd have the woman in white get you and then the, the, the then there was the the bride in black and then the man with the with the breath mask and then the demon with the red demon all of them uh, one after another, and it's like if you, the timing was right, it was like ah, 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 as you went out of the house. It was quite nifty. So, and the red lipstick demon showed up again outside of the house after you thought it was all done. You're coming around the back and going on the ramp to go out of the exit, and you think house is all done, and suddenly coming out of a, a, a 
you know, there's sort of a panel that, you know, I mean, realizes that, and suddenly there he is. Ah, fuck. Not another one. So, yeah. Mm. So that was Insidious. Oh, my goodness. I finished uh, that house as well. So, cocktail time. Uh, and in the last few minutes of this video, because I'm again hitting a half hour mark, and so I'm going to leave off now. I made what four videos today? I made eight, nine, no, three, I think. Eight, nine, and this is ten. All right, so ten, and uh, let's see, what's the insidious cocktail? Now that's not it. Is that it? No, that's Walking Dead. What is this? That's Purge. Where the hell is Insidious? Is it the first one? No, that's Freddy vs. Jason. There's eight cocktails here. Eight houses, eight cocktails. Hold on. Freddy vs. Jason. And what's this one? Jack Presents. American Werewolf. Body Collectors. Run Blood, Sweat and Fears. What's that? Asylum Wonderland 3D. Walking Dead. And The Perch. Holy crap, did I not make a cocktail for Insidious? Damn. I don't see one here. You know, they had nine haunted houses that year, didn't they? Oh, that was it. That was the year they went to nine haunted houses. I either did not make a cocktail for Insidious, or I didn't bother to put it in my Facebook. I don't think that could be possible. I'm sure I made a cocktail for Insidious. I'm going to have to go and check and see if it's somewhere, uh, someplace that I, I listed it somewhere, and it's not in that that album on my Facebook for, for cocktails for Howling Horror Nights 25. Damn, how could it not be that? That just startles me. I'm sure I made something for Insidious. Hmm. If I didn't, that may be a new project. I may have to do an Insidious cocktail video to make up for the one that is missing. Huh. There's always a good excuse to make a cocktail, so hey, why not? All right, in that case, I'll figure that mystery out and find the insidious cocktail, wherever it was and what it was, and then relate that. Or I'll have to make a new video where I make an insidious cocktail for Halloween Horror Nights 25. Actually, if some of the rumors are true, I might be able to save that one for this year anyway. But, well, at least in part. <laughs> oh my goodness <coughs> so next time will be part 11 I believe uh, in this history and I'll continue with the houses of Halloween Horror Nights 25 and that would be The Purge and then of course The Walking Dead oh dear which was I believe the fourth Walking Dead house. 22, 23, 24, yes. And probably the worst Walking Dead house. But that will be next time, and it won't be tonight, because I'm already almost 35 minutes, and that's really long. All right, then, ta-ta for now, and maybe there'll be a new revelation for Halloween Horror Nights 27 in the near future. Until then, have fun.